Anticipated, acclaimed, award-winning. That makes this a triple A film, right? A crime thriller about what ifs. What if you had just done something different? Would the effect on everyone's life be the same, better or worse? That's the question this movie answers. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans and let's check out the reasons you should or shouldn't watch this film. Yan Wen has just turned 18. What should be a happy moment for him, turning into an adult, brings the stark realization that his life isn't really his own and that he feels just like the caged dog he visits every morning with his best friend Ah Sing. They've created a webtoon that eerily mirrors their lives about a vengeful character who bears resemblance to both a person Yan Wen knows and a character in an online game. On the night of his 18th birthday, Yan Wen visits a night market and begins indiscriminately shooting at people enjoying the night. He is stopped by a journalist covering the story of a public housing block nearby, but the chaos of the night results in the fatality of a popular online gaming streamer. The shooting has a ripple effect on everyone's life. Yan Wen and Ah Sing, Lin Lin, the poor girl from the public housing, Vita, the streamer's fiance, Mold, the journalist, and the parents of both Yan Wen and Lin Lin. But if there was an opportunity to change the events of the day, what would the result be? This movie is strictly in the crime drama thriller genre. However, the thriller element takes place in the second half of the movie, which is something to be aware about when going into this film. What appears to be a slow film is anything but that. The absolute strength of this movie and the reason it's such a compelling watch lies in two key elements, the characters and the alternative timelines. Let's check out the characters first. Yan Wen is the main character who's celebrating his 18th birthday, except it's not really much of a celebration. His dad gifts him a new mobile phone that's preloaded with intrusive apps that will use big data to plan his life. He's so busy with an interview, he can barely summon up enough time to spend with his son. Yan's mother thinks she can buy his love with gifts, when all he really wants is her attention. He's being forced to study overseas against his will, but his mother seems to support this idea. Again, what should be a special day for Yan Wen is spent at a piano recital for what appears to be a secondary character in Yan's life, but perhaps an important character for his mother. Yan Wen realizes he isn't the most important thing in either of his parents' lives. The movie plays up on this. Yan Wen is both Oreo the dog and the Roomba vacuum cleaner. They're both trapped, and even once Oreo is let free, the next day his cage is locked up with chains, ensuring that he can never get free again exactly how Yan Wen feels about his life. His best friend Ah Sing has a secret that he can't tell him. He's in love with him and fills this void by hooking up with random boys who look exactly like Yan Wen. But Ah Sing also knows Yan Wen the best, or at least he thinks he does. He allows his crush on him to cloud his judgment, forcing him to make some truly terrible decisions in both timelines. Lin Lin and her mother are two of the more interesting characters in the movie. They live together in the public housing block where Lin Lin's mother tries to survive by selling rice balls at her food cart. Lin Lin herself is a brilliant student, but her home life forces her to make terrible choices in order to make money. It's worth noting that actress Xu Yang Wang won the Best Supporting Actress Award at the 2021 Golden Horse Film Festival, Taiwan's premier film awards festival, for her role in this film. Lin Lin served time in prison for drug trafficking, but she uses the online game as a way of escaping her life, only to discover that she's treated almost the same way online by a popular streamer. That streamer is Shine, or Sheng, as he's known in real life. He is a boring public servant and uses the online world to create an alternative persona, where he is popular and rich, with thousands of fans following his gaming streams, where he flirts with a girl that he hopes to hook up with. He is engaged to Vita, a woman so consumed by her job at an advertising firm who does the promotions for the online game that she neglects Sheng, treating him with utter disdain. It's only until he's murdered by Yan Wen does she discover his secret second life and that he's not the person she thinks he is. And finally, Mold, the journalist. He's doing an expose on the public housing block that Lin Lin resides in. And it's also the location he meets Sheng, as he's the public servant responsible for the residence. Mold is the type of person who loves to dig deep into his stories, and that's the nature of being a journalist. He ends up as kind of the anti-hero of the movie. As a side note, his persona really reminds me of the Japanese actor Takuya Kimura, who plays Yagami in the video game Judgment. 
and in fact, he could be my favourite character in the film, with an excellent performance from actor Morning Mo. I've spent a lot of time on the characters, but that's because they really make this film. Their backstories, the way all of their lives are intertwined, and how they all interact with each other. It's important to the film, and it's important in both of the timelines. And speaking of the timelines, this is where the movie shines. The movie is split into three parts, the introduction, and then the two separate scenarios. They both share the same introduction, just converge at a different yet vital point. Both timelines are very well considered. The way the characters' motivations and story arcs are presented both seem plausible and are both enjoyable. There are some obvious differences in characters within each timeline. Yan Wen and Lin Lin are clearly very different people in the second scenario, yet still have the same constraints as in the first. The most interesting part of the second storyline is how the life of the streamer and his fiance change. His secrets are revealed, which results in their engagement falling apart. It also means the journalist has a different role, as he investigates a different type of secondary story. This is gritty Taiwanese filmmaking at its best, and while it won't be for everyone, the person who is keen to spend two hours getting heavily invested into interesting characters and wants to explore a movie where alternative timelines are presented will clearly enjoy the strong conversations that come from the conclusion of this film. Perhaps it's because I really enjoyed this film that I'm struggling to think of some valid reasons why someone would actively avoid this movie. First, I can think of that the trailer does create a type of horror movie thriller vibe that's actually not present in the film. Now, marketing people are going to do what marketing people do best, and that is hyper film up. But there is no traditional horror elements here other than the horrors of what humans can do when pushed to the extreme. Think of the sadness in this scenario, another Taiwanese film that pulled no punches. This movie does pull its punches though, as it doesn't feature violence for the sake of it. So if the trailers led you to believe that this could be a violent, almost horror type film, then be forewarned that it's not like that at all. It's also very confronting when it comes to its themes, and the discussions within can be quite frank, especially on the topics of casual drug use and sex work. There's also a menacing feeling of animal cruelty in the movie, which is thankfully nothing more than that. But if you're a dog lover, you might not like the candid conversations that occur around the start of the film. The movie also never really sets itself up to fully explore the youth violence that is committed in the movie. Now that might be because the focus is more to do with the characters and the themes of alternative timelines, but there's no real critique in this film. There is a theme about big data and the system knowing what an end user wants, but it's not explored too much beyond a conversation in the advertising studio and the interview Yan Wen's dad gives a tech website. With this in mind, the movie could have done without that big data element, unless it was going to fully imply that there was an external influence, external from Taiwan for example, that was causing the youth aggression. Overall, I did really enjoy the film and found that at its conclusion, it led to a detailed discussion about its themes, and that made the movie a winner in my book, especially if two people can watch the film and both get slightly different interpretations of character motivations. Overall then, I'd award this movie 4 stars. I think it's a must watch if you love alternative Taiwanese movies, or Asian films that dare to explore strong and darker themes than you'd expect. It's a shame this movie will never be spoken about at the same level as some of the more popular, award winning movies. However, if you've seen Goddamned Asura, what did you think of it? Thank you for watching this video, please press like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to Asian Film Fans for more news, trailers and reviews.